2020 facility managers and in-house service providers survey done by cleaning and maintenance ma uh, management. So the survey that they did uh, was rather interesting. They, they sent out a survey to a number of different facility managers and in-house service providers and they, they asked a series of questions. And uh, you know, here are some of the questions that they asked. So one of the things that they asked was uh, facility representation. So you know, which, which sector of the industry uh, do they uh, represent? And uh, they found that 30% was in education, college, and universities. And um, about 25% was in uh, K through 12. And then 15% were commercial office and government buildings. And then 11% was in healthcare, hospital in general. And then uh, we had about 6% in, in healthcare for long-term care. And about 5% in hospitality, hotels, motels, apartments. So, you know, that's kind of helpful when you're thinking about what sectors that you might go into or expand into. Now, another thing that they did was uh, workload uh, responsibility. And this is meaning like how many accounts they've had or how many facilities that they manage. So um, what they got is 19% was one or two facilities. You know, so that's on the low side. But again, you know, they're not saying how large these facilities are. 17% uh, was three to five facilities. 15% uh, was six to 10 faci uh, facilities. 10% uh, was 11 to 20 facilities. And 38% um, had more than uh, 20 facilities. So that kind of gives you an idea of where you're falling in, uh, you know, as the, uh, as the industry. Now, something else that was interesting uh, with this survey, I seen that they had a supervisory responsibility. And when I was when looking at this, uh, I can see that there was 12% that had five or less. Um, so that means that it was direct or indirect reports, uh, people that were reporting to them. Um, and then we had 14% at 6 to 10, 24% uh, at 11 to 25. So that was the um, one of the higher, uh, higher percentages. Then you had 15% uh, at 26 to 29. You had 14% at 50 to 99. And then 22% uh, of more than 100. So, you know, those are some significant numbers, you know. So, and I think the 24% uh, were their... Uh, you know, um, reporting uh, 11 to 25 was uh, the average that I generally see too. Uh, you know, when you start having a, a resp uh, uh, supervisor responsible for uh, over 100, 100 uh, uh, team members, boy, you know, that's, uh, the, that's a quite a bit of workload. Uh, I don't think they could uh, manage them very efficiently. But, uh, 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 they went on uh, with the survey and they had, uh, you know, the, the, the top areas or the biggest facility problem areas. 43% um, was restrooms. Now, there's no surprise to that. Um, carpeted surfaces, 17%. Then we had multi-surface areas, 15%. Hard floor surfaces, 14%. And then we had entries and foyers, uh, 7%. And then food services, 4%. So you know that kind of tells you what the biggest facility, uh, uh, the biggest facility area problem areas were, and uh, like I say, it comes as no surprise that it was uh, restrooms at 43 percent. You know, so you have to make sure that you have a good restroom uh, program in place, and uh, you know maybe if you're cleaning a larger facility, uh, maybe you should think about having a um, day porter, so they're periodically going into those restrooms and, and keeping them stocked and cleaned. Another part of the survey was, was uh, do you outsource? So, and uh, about 65% do not outsource a portion of their clean or janitorial service. So, you know, that's, uh, that's interesting. And uh, when you break this down, uh, the stripper and, uh, stripper and recoding hard floors, uh, in-house was 78%, uh, outsourced 17%. Restorative deep clean or deep cleaning the carpets, 72% in-house, 24% out, outsourced. 
So when you, uh, when you look at the, what is actually outsourced, the, the things that you may want to consider is um, mat cleaning and maintenance. 20% um, of that's outsourced. Uh, exterior maintenance, sidewalks and parking, 22%. Uh, uh, grounds care, 26%. Then painting, that's 24%. Uh, fire and water damage restoration, 64%. So that comes as no surprise that if they had a fire or water damage that they would outsource that to a restoration company. Window cleaning, 40% is outsourced. Then you have bird and pest control at 62%. You got roof maintenance and repair at 57%. And you have uh, building security at 25%. So hopefully that will give you some ideas as to, you know, maybe some areas that you'll be able to get your foot in the door at some of these facilities. Now some uh, additional things that they have is um, labor cost. And um, labor cost, they had 17% 17, 17 uh, 17 spent more than 70% on operating budget. While 12% spent less than 30% of operating budget. So that's interesting, you know, so if you got, if you're spending 70% on your labor cost, boy, you better start looking within there and making some changes because that's too high. So now when they start looking at uh, wages as far as entry level and experienced, uh, what we have is that uh, in the Midwest area, so that's, you know, Ohio, uh, Minnesota, South Dakota, that area, uh, it's $12 to thir 12 to 14 dollars. I'm just going to round these numbers off. Uh, in the Northwest, uh, you know, uh, New England and uh, Pennsylvania area, 14 to 16 dollars. Uh, the South that covers Texas to Florida. Uh, in there, they're charging 10 to 12 dollars per hour. Uh, in the West, uh, they're charging 14 to 16 dollars an hour. And uh, in the in Canada, they're charging 16 to 18 dollars per hour. And that really is no surprise because Canada typically uh, uh, has a higher labor or higher uh, are paying higher wages. Now, for experienced uh, help in the Midwest, they're paying fourteen dollars to sixteen dollars an hour. Uh, the north uh, northeast was sixteen to eighteen dollars. The south is twelve to fourteen dollars. The west was sixteen to eighteen dollars, and Canada is eighteen to twenty dollars per hour. So, you know, uh, again, that's why it's so important for you to make sure you understand where you're at with your minimum wage and uh, your labor, your labor uh, cost. Um, you know, because we want to make sure that we're competitive uh, so we can find the, uh, and attract the best talent possible. So, you know, we don't want to be paying, uh, you know, $12 an hour when maybe the, the market area is paying, you know, $17 an hour. Uh, the biggest uh, biggest concerns with cleaning staff, 28% uh, was employee training. Now, for me, that really comes as no surprise because, you know, there's such a lack of training. Uh, I, I don't understand that. Uh, you know, I think uh, most business owners and facility managers feel that it's costing them money to do so, but they, they're not looking past that. They're not looking at the, the benefits of it, uh, of, uh, you know, what, what it's going to gain them. Um, so that's no surprise. 27% uh, is uh, employee retention. And then we got uh, proper use of products is 26%. Now that's unbelievable because now that falls back on training. Um, you know, there should be no question uh, uh, for any of your team members on how to use a product. And 19% uh, was on uh, employee safety. Again, falls back on training. Uh, if you're not providing a safety training, uh, why not? It makes no sense. So, uh, some of the annual turnover rates that they had, um, you know, uh, one to ten percent was uh, had said forty-three percent, uh, eleven to twenty percent uh, said twenty-eight percent, uh, twenty-one to thirty percent said ten percent. Um, so, you know, that's uh, that's rather interesting, uh, you know, because I, I suspect that, that number is actually higher than that. So now some of the things that you can uh, expect what a facility manager purchase uh, is uh, clearly it's cleaning and disinfectants, you know, because that's 91%. And 
ever since the COVID-19 thing, you know, uh, all these uh, facility managers are out there trying to buy cleaning and disinfectant and sanitizers and things like that. Uh, then 90% for uh, cleaning supplies, mops and uh, carts and things like that. 87% was hand soap and sanitizers. 86% uh, was uh, restroom dispensers, paper and soap. 86% uh, again was carpet care chemicals. So, you know, those are some of the things that they're, that they're doing. Um, hard floor equipment is 79%. Um, so these are just, you know, the items that they, that they would uh, purchase. So uniforms and apparel is 52%. Uh, so that should give you an idea of, uh, you know, where you, maybe you might want to be. Now we also have here uh, top resources for new product information. So, you know, if you're researching on a product, you know, typically where do you go? Well, the, the survey says here that 79% uh, uh, go to distributors, 76% uh, go to uh, industry publications, and only 65% uh, industry trade shows. So, you know, that's pretty clear uh, where they're getting their information. Also, when we start looking at this, you know, uh, it's saying that there's 12% purchase almost all uh, of their uh, cleaning products online. And that's kind of surprising. I'd think that that number would be a little, that a lot higher, you know. But, you know, a lot of people are either going to their supplier, the local supplier, um, and or the big box stores. Now, something else that they were asking is that, uh, do you use autonomous uh, robotic cleaning equipment? And... Uh, 68% said no, and uh, we had uh, only 8% that said yes, and 20% uh, said no, but are considering it. Now, uh, that's something that I think you're going to see uh, being used more and more in the, in the future here. Uh, you know, the, the cost on robotics is getting lower and lower, and I think that's probably why most people aren't using robotics is because to, to purchase an auto scrubber or a vacuum cleaner or something like that there, uh, you know, the, the price is just insane. You know, you're going to pay thousands and thousands of dollars for this, for this machine. But uh, I think as, that, uh, as, that, as those prices drop down, we're going to see more and more people switching over to robotic equipment. Well, there you have it. You know, uh, those are some uh, good numbers to have. Uh, hopefully you found this helpful because, uh, you know, it kind of tells you kind of where you need to be or where you're at. Uh, compared to you know some of these other uh, in-house uh, providers and uh, facility managers and it also should give you a good insight on if you're going after facilities when you're talking to these facility managers you, you should have a good idea as to what they're looking for and what they're going to be buying you know what they're in uh, what they're doing in-house and what they're uh, um, contracting out so hopefully you found that helpful if you did go ahead and click on the like and share button and uh, as usual, if you uh, have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, go ahead and click on the subscribe button and uh, you'll find uh, many more videos on how to build a successful cleaning business. I'm Steve Hansen, co-founder of the janitorialstore.com and myhousecleaningbiz.com. Thanks for checking in today and we'll see you next time.